guys, Aaron here. Today I'm going to be talking to you about a common issue I'm seeing on these newer 3.5 liter EcoBoost engines and that's failure of the electronic throttle body. Now this issue isn't exclusive to the 3.5 liter. If you have the 2.0, the 2.5, or the 3.7 um, and some of the other F-150s, you can get the same exact problem um, which is intermittent loss of power. Um, when we go ahead and go to step on the throttle, there's no throttle input. Um, the engine can shake kind of like it's misfiring. And also we get a myriad of codes on the dash all relating to the failure of the electronic throttle body. Now Ford's actually released a TSB regarding this issue in October of 2016. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description where you can check that out to see if you're getting the same symptoms and codes that Ford states in their TSB. Now for this particular instance, this is a 2015 with the 3.5 liter V6 EcoBoost and we're experiencing P2112 uh, as well as a myriad of other networking loss of communication codes which we'll go over in a little bit. Now the symptoms that we're currently experiencing with this truck is uh, intermittent loss of power. You'll be at a red light or just cruising or accelerating and then all of a sudden the throttle will be closed. You'll have no input. What you'll have to do is um, turn the vehicle off, turn it back on, which can be really dangerous if you're in the middle of an intersection or driving on any street. And we're also experiencing about four or five different area networking codes in the ABS traction control module. And in the PCM, we're experiencing this uh, P2112 uh, throttle actuator A control system stuck closed. So let's go ahead and go over the parts and the tools we're gonna need to get the job done. So we're gonna need a ratchet, a seven millimeter socket, eight millimeter or five sixteenths, 10 millimeter socket, and a plastic trim removal tool. If you don't have one of these, then some pliers or a flat blade screwdriver might work just fine. And of course, we're gonna need our new throttle body and throttle body gasket. I really recommend that you use an OEM throttle body, not a remand throttle body. I've seen a couple issues resulting from going with a cheaper remand unit um, from any auto parts store like O'Reilly's or Napa. I'll go ahead and throw a link in the description to where you can purchase the OEM unit online for a very good price. Now the first thing we're going to want to go ahead and do is just disconnect the negative terminal off the battery using a 10 millimeter socket. And after that we're going to take a 7 millimeter socket and remove the upper portion of the intake. And as you can see with the intake removed, we have a lot better access to our throttle body. Now you won't have to remove this upper piece, but I'm just gonna go ahead and move it out of the way so we can have a better view of what's going on here. Now that that's out of the way, the next step is to remove the intake tube that the throttle body attaches to. What we're gonna do is remove the seven millimeter hose clamps up top, and then we're gonna work our way down to the intercooler to loosen up those hose clamps as well. Now that we have clear access to our throttle body, next thing is going to be to remove this connector right here. There's a little red tab and what you could do with a flat blade screwdriver, simply pull the tab out. Now we can uh, depress the tang on the connector and pull it out of the throttle body. And after we have that done, we could simply remove the harness from the throttle body. You could take some pliers or a flat blade screwdriver. I like to use a trim removal tool and pop the little rivet um, that's just outside of the throttle body itself. Now that all is left to do is to take an 8mm or 5 16th socket and remove all four bolts.
So I went ahead and got the old throttle body off and I removed all four bolts that holds this cover on. And when we remove it, you can see we have an excess of oil buildup down here that's probably coming in interference with this throttle body motor. So um, Ford actually attributes this particular issue that we're experiencing it with this contamination. So that's good to see that we do have a visible sign of oil buildup. Now from here, it's pretty much reverse procedure, starting with our throttle body gasket. After we have the throttle body bolted up, we can go ahead and put our connector in. Just make sure that once you have it fully seated, we go ahead and push that red tab, and then we take our little bushing and put it inside the throttle body. Now that our new throttle body and gasket has been installed, it's time to clear the keep alive memory inside the computer. And basically what that's gonna do is that's gonna take back all of our learned fuel settings and learned throttle position values that have changed over you know, the throttle bottle wearing and carbon buildup in the throttle body. And it's gonna reset those back to the stock parameters. So ultimately there's two ways to reset the cam or the keep alive memory inside these PCMs. First way is the way that I always do it is with a bi-directional scanner. So we're simply going to select the vehicle which is a 2015 Ford King Ranch 3.5 liter. Now we're going to go ahead and pull up our codes. And then when we go to do that there's an option for cam reset which is right here. key on engine off and there you go it's reset and finally after that we can go ahead and clear any codes that we have in our PCM and the second way without a scanner is just to disconnect the ground cable now we're going to take a jumper wire and we're going to jump the ground cable to the positive cable and that's going to completely drain any capacitors in the PCM that could be storing data while the battery is disconnected Hold it for about 10 seconds, and then our cam will be reset. All right, now we can go ahead and put everything back together and take it for a test drive. All right, so just finishing up with the test drive and everything seems to be pretty good. Haven't experienced any of the symptoms um, that we were experiencing before. So hope this video has helped you out. Just one thing to keep in mind though, uh, since we reset the cam, a lot of the driving characteristics of the vehicle are gonna be reverted back to stock. So if you're used to the transmission shifting a certain way or anything like that, it's gonna take a little bit of while for uh, the computer to adapt back to the way in your style of driving but hope this video has helped you out guys if it has please like and subscribe uh, thanks for watching as always and i'll see you guys next time